protected amino acids, it's a very proved in technology. And it's like we like to say, it's not an additive, it's a nutrient that the cow has a need. And the research has shown that especially the high producing cow, they need to be supplemented on, on these amino acids. So to have the best support from your consultant, your nutrition, it's important to discuss with them the options of protein source that you have available in your region and to combine them with the amino acids to achieve the best production, the best health, but mainly more profitability for your business. It's not just by including the technology, but it's learning how is the best way of including in your situation, in your reality. So hello everyone, this is Luis Ferrero, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Belt podcast. And today we have the opportunity to visit with Thales Lelis, business director at the Vonic Animal Nutrition. And Thales will discuss with us a little bit about the dairy market in different areas uh, in the world, as well as the use of different technologies that can help with the market. But before that, uh, first, welcome Thales. Thank you very much for joining us. Can you give us a brief background about yourself? Hello, hello. Thanks for having me here, Professor Luis. It's really great. Uh, I think it's a pleasure and a nice opportunity to be here with you at the podcast and discuss a little bit about our market, the dairy market. And so, yeah, I'm I'm a vet. My background is a vet. I was graduated at the University Federal of Minas Gerais in Brazil. Nowadays, I'm working with Evonic Animal Nutrition. And I'm responsible for the, the ruminant sector at the Latin America market, especially focus in, in dairy. So, yeah, this is a little brief of my background. But, yeah, thanks again for having me here. Yeah, absolutely. Ivonic Animal Nutrition is committed to ensure food security and safety while reducing the ecological footprint of animal farming. Its products and services use evidence-based solutions that seek to promote animal welfare and reduce reliance on natural resources. All this is underpinned by long-standing industry partnerships and deep customer understanding. Ivonics focus on efficiency, sustainable, healthy nutrition, and collaborations with livestock farming partners creates value for customers and consumers. So, so please tell us a little bit about the dairy market right now in Brazil and Latin America, and how does that contrast with the other areas uh, in the world in terms of how it works and uh, the main differences that you see? That's a nice question, especially because when I start working at, at Evonik, and Evonik has a, a German company, we, people they're from there, they look at Brazil and see statistics and they get crazy because when you look at it, at them, they're going to tell you that you have around 200 million cows. Of course, not all dairy. And when you look at the dairy cows, you're talking about like 17, 16 millions. It will depend. But not all, all of them, they are specialized in milk production which means that we're going to start narrowing our market when we are looking for a, like the real professional dairy producers. We estimate this is going to vary a lot, but we estimate that we're going to have around 2 million dairy cows specialized in like milk production. But this can, like some people will say that it can achieve like 4.5 4. million dairy cows. So it's still a market that lacks a lot of information. And this makes our life a bit more difficult. But the good thing about that is that we see a very good opportunity because as we are observing the Brazilian dairy market, it's getting more and more professional. And we are seeing a decrease in the number of dairy, dairy cows, but also the dairy producers but at the other side, the milk production didn't decrease, which means that these cows that we still keep in our system, they're getting more and more uh, specialized or, produ or with more productivity. So it's nice because we see this, this change and, and they're not so low, like they're not uh, 
they are not slow. They are very fast. So we have a statistic that around 100,000 uh, dairy producers leaves the activity per year here in Brazil. So it's a fast changing market. Absolutely. And I think it resembles what we see in other areas, right? I think here in Wisconsin, we have a similar trend where the number of dairies is decreasing, but the number of cows and uh, the number of uh, milk production, it remains the same or higher, right? So I think that the dairies are consolidating. And I believe that this is going to be something that we will see pretty much everywhere worldwide as we continue to move forward with uh, dairy production. But you mentioned that the producers, uh, they usually adapt technology very fast. And this is something that will be very important because it helps to uh, not only add technology to the industry, but certainly helps with production uh, and other aspects of the dairy industry. So tell us more about that. What type of technologies have you been working with and that you see good adoption by the industry? Yeah, first thing that we are seeing, not only in Brazil, but other countries from South America, like Uruguay, Peru, Chile, is that we see a trend of the farmers to start looking more on cow, cow comfort or well-being. So it's, it's a trend in Brazil these new barns, not freestyle, but mainly compost barns that are being, oh, yeah. being constructed here. So the guys, they have the cows on pasture and now they're bringing them to the housing system. And just with that, we increase a lot the, the milk production. We're talking about that you're going to leave average on 18 liters per cow per day to 36, 34, just to give them more comfort. And when you look at the cow's diet, you have to improve it a lot. Because if my cow has better like situation, better well-being, but also it's increasing the milk, they're going to need more nutrients. They're going to need more additives to support that productivity. And one thing that we're doing is like bringing this technology to the producers. So bringing this to the farmers, and actually we have to teach not just farmers, but many times cons consultants how to use this technology. And we're talking about like uh, additives, like uh, protected methionine, protected amino acids, other source of protein, other source of oils that we're bringing also to the market. Essential oils also are working well in, in, in these systems. And we always have to, to remember that Brazil is still a tropical area. So it's not just keeping the, ho the cows in the barn. You have to help them to fight against for ma like mainly heat stress. So this is something that we are looking for in bringing more technology to support the milk production. Absolutely. And I think all those technologies you mentioned are very common in other areas as well, you know, especially the use of rumen protected uh, amino acids, which is a very nice tool for diet formulation. Obviously, heat stress depending on the area. But even here in Wisconsin now, we actually see a lot of heat stress during the summer, uh, which is something that maybe we don't think a lot about compared to areas like in Brazil, but it's definitely very important. Uh, so, so tell us a little bit more about how, how is the uh, establishment of those technologies? How is the process of discussing with farmers and consultants in order to show them the importance of that? And, and, and then after that, how do you help them to actually implement that? This is a very interesting question because it's our first target. It's not like bringing the product to the market, but especially like first test the product, see that they're working well, and then help advisors, consultants, nutritionists to know how to use it. So the main step that we are doing, the first step that we are doing, it's to promote that technology by research. So we have this compromise with universities, with researchers to evaluate them at a uh, research level. And then we bring this, the, the knowledge that we create to, to the group that we have, to the set of 
players that we have, not only the consultants, but sometimes also the farmer. You have to teach the farmer that it's needed that investment to help the cow produce a little bit more. And one thing that we are doing very interestingly, interesting, it's the science tour. We have at Evonik this science tour where we take some customers or advisors to a certain part of the globe and we help them to learn about this, what, what, what farmers are doing in different parts of the world. For example, a few days ago, we were at the World Dairy Expo in, in Wisconsin with a group of farmers and consultants, and we had the chance to go to the University of Wisconsin, have this, this seminar with Brazilian researchers that are there where they present what they are producing of knowledge. So we have this compromise with, with our customers to help them access the knowledge that it's spread on the world. So that's why we call it science in tour because it's a tour focused in science. So this is how we are looking nowadays. And it's very interesting and fun <laughs> to do this together with them. Of course, we have to have a technical thing, but we also have to go by like have a little bit of fun. No, absolutely. And I think it's a great way of showcasing and diffusing technology, right? Uh, having the opportunity of having farmers and consultants to interact with academia and learn from uh, the new research going on is also something interesting to uh, basically prepare them to, hey, when this is ready to be used, here's where uh, or why you have to use those. It is basically what we do for extension. So I think it's great that your team focuses a lot on that. And uh, for sure, it's something that more and more farmers will be intrigued about. So to finalize our podcast, tell us a little bit more of how do you see for farmers the use of rumen-protected amino acids? Uh, what is the best way of utilizing them? Uh, and, and why farmers should be using them? I think protected amino acids, it's a very proved in technology. And it's like we like to say, it's not an additive, it's a nutrient that the cow has a need. And the research has shown that especially the high producing cow, they need to be supplemented on, on these amino acids. So to have the best support from your consultant, your nutrition, it's important to discuss with them the options of protein source that you have available in your region and to combine them with the amino acids to achieve the best production, the best health, but mainly more profitability for your business. It's not just by including the technology, but it's learning how is the best way of including in your situation, in your reality. So we are here to help people to understand it better and to discuss and create this like uh, this knowledge together. So what we are offering our customers nowadays is like, let's discuss what is the best option or the more profitable option way to use the technology that we are bringing to the market. And this is what we do. We need. So farmers, they're creating trust with us because we are helping them to get the best of the technology that they know that they need to use. And that's why we are doing almost, like you said, research and extension together with the, the players we have in the market. So this is, this is what we want. We want them to look at us as like trust people that we are going to help you to bring the best solution for your farm. Absolutely. And I think that's a great way of doing business. So thank you, Thales, for joining us today. Thank you at home for joining our podcast. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Hey, everyone. We are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.